Okay guys, I got another thing I want to show you. Look at what this thing is. In case you can't tell by that a little symbol right here, this thing is an NES flash card. And, well, here is the micro SD card right here. As you can see, it has a little plastic flap on it to make it easier for you to be able to pull it out of the, of the NES. Now, here's the funny thing. Unlike most of the other flashcards that I've been reviewing for the other systems that I have, this one was actually made by uh, this one person in Poland. It's their own operating system, it's literally their own creation, and I forget how much they're charging, but I will say this, it is way more affordable than any typical EverDrive that you can get online. Let's compare this cartridge to a real NES cartridge. They're about the same size, though in terms of weight, it kind of feels like the uh, official NES cartridge has a little bit more weight than this uh, than this flash cart. And here's the cool thing. The person who makes this flash cart, they usually make them available in multiple different colors. If you want yours as a specific color, then you gotta include what color you want in your message to the seller whenever you buy it. And as you can see, mine is blue. Another convenient thing is, the person who made this, whenever they ship it out, they usually... Uh, they usually include this with the cartridge, which is honestly very convenient and very considerate of them, considering how not every computer has a micro SD card reader or any SD card reader at all. Here is a minor drawback to this uh, flash card. The compatibilities of this cartridge is very limited. I mean, the seller did say that it is compatible for about 80% of the NES library, but the thing is, like, there are some games that use more mappers than, than what this card is compatible with, and so, because of that, like, not every game is going to work on here. And I've heard that uh, this problem is a lot more common on a Japanese Famicom games that anybody would want to put on here. Because, well, you know, the whole mappers and everything. But anyway, I'm going to go ahead and plug this thing to my NES, and I'll show you guys what it can do. Alright, and here we are in the main menu. And... One thing I forgot to mention is that the person who made this who made this flash card, they said that they did not put any games on there due to copyright reasons. However, for some odd reason, whenever I got mine, it got preloaded with Super Mario Bros. 3, which I don't understand why, but anyway, like, yeah, as you can see, like, the games that I added on here, like, some of them are just ROM hacks, while some of them are some, uh, some bootleg Famicom games, which are kind of a guilty pleasure of mine because of how weird they can be. And as you can see on the bottom of the screen, it, let, it lets you know what game is supported and what game is not supported. Like, as you can see, like, yeah, I have Tweeterman's Mario ROM hack on here, and on the bottom it says correct NES file. And then Donkey Kong Country 4, which is a, which is a bootleg port of the original DKC on the NES, like, as you can see it says NES file not supported. Like, Mario 7 and 1, not supported. Like, Super Donkey Kong, like, that one, that one's supported, thankfully, because, oh, I can't wait to show you guys that one. And yeah, I do have the Duck Hunt LCD mod on here, but unfortunately it doesn't work with my Zapper Gun, and I've heard that it mainly works on a, on a aftermarket Zapper Guns, so I'm gonna have to get myself one of those. And yeah, the Sonic Volume 2, Sonic NES, yeah. Panda Prince, also not supported. Mario 7, supported. Mario 3 Mix, also supported. And apparently this thing's also compatible with saves as well. Lion King 5, supported. Like, Street Dance and Hit Mouse. I don't understand why that's not... Why that's not supported. It just says not an NES ROM file, even though it did say .NES whenever I added it on there. And Super Mario All-Stars NES, which is literally a compilation of a Mario, Mario Lost Levels, Mario 2, and Mario 3, like... Literally just, like, Mario All-Stars on the NES, like, for some reason that one's not supported, which is sad. But yeah, like, Street Dance and Hitmouse, like, the Street Dance part, it's a clone of DDR, and, uh, I wanted to see if this system would play it, because one impressive thing about that bootleg DDR clone is that the songs that are on there, they're not, like, 8-bit remixes, they're, like, compressed versions of the actual songs, which is honestly pretty impressive. And I wanted to see if I can get that one working on my NES, but apparently it doesn't. But, yeah. Let, let me go ahead and try out one of the ROM hacks that I put on here. First, let's, first let's go with Tweeterman's Mario ROM hack. Now, for some weird reason, the way it loads these games... So, yeah, like, it, it does that little uh, show of, like, many different colors before the game loads, and... Yeah. Anyway, let's get started. 
Yeah, I remember I was playing this and oh man, did I suck. Did I suck at it. Oh, just like that. I swear I hit the jump button, but it didn't even register. But yeah, I wonder if the game was actually meant to be this hard. I would have to ask him. But yeah, anyway, that's Mario the Really Lost Levels. Gosh dang it, working on my actual NES. Now, let's reset. All right, now, the one game that I was really here to see if it would work, it would be Sonic Volume 2, which I'll show you in just a minute. But for comparison's sake, here's the original Sonic bootleg game. All right, here we go. Yeah, I think it's kind of funny how uh, this bootleg Sonic 1 port basically started life as a uh, Somari on the any. Oh, dadgummit. Yeah, I don't understand why, but whenever you play uh, the bootleg Sonic port on, on the NES, like, for some reason, the colors tend to glitch out once in a while. I don't know if it's a common issue or what. But, yeah, this is the original bootleg Sonic port, for comparison's sake. Oh, son of a biscuit. Anyway, let me go ahead and show you guys Sonic Volume 2. Alright, now what Sonic Volume 2 is supposed to be... Well, believe it or not, like, there are people out there who are, like, making mods for that bootleg Sonic game to basically improve it. Like, make the game a lot more playable and a lot more enjoyable, and even adding new features. This is the one that came out, like, just very recently, and I wanted to see if this one would work on here. Now, from what I've heard, what this thing does, like, it adds a lot more new features, like... Like, they added Blue Sphere into into the one of the special stages, which is honestly really impressive that they got working on, on an NES ROM. Let's go ahead and see if it works. Well, it should, because it said correct NES file on the bottom. But anyway, let's wait until it loads up. Now that was really impressive. The fact they managed to get the the fact they managed to get the Sega chant working on there. But yeah, I gotta say, the control has definitely improved. I remember when I first played it, I still had a little bit of trouble with the controls, but not nearly as much as the original game. I mean, there is a slight little input delay when it comes to jumping. I mean, I don't know. I don't know if it's an issue with the ROM or if it's my TV, considering how it's one of the more modern TVs and everything. But, yeah. The, the brand new mod for the Hummer Team Sonic game works on here, which is really nice. <laughs> Isn't that funny? I'm playing Sonic on my NES. I wonder how many people are going to say, Oh, dude, that is sacrilegious! <laughs> yeah. Anyway, let, let's move on to... Oh, would you look at that? Anyway, let's go ahead and move on to, to some of the other games I added on here. Now this one right here, Super Mario 3 Mix. I haven't even played this game yet, I've only seen a live stream of it. But, according to the thing on the bottom, it looks like it should work. Let's go ahead and check it out. Yeah, one thing I absolutely love about using these flashcards is being able to play ROM hacks on an actual system rather than using an emulator. I always like doing that, and that's why I get these things. Oh, I can see the title screen music is a recreation of the new Super Mario Bros. Wii theme. What the hell? Apparently there's already a save on here. Let's see what this is. I mean, I swear I have never played this game before, so I don't know what this is. Oh, black screen. Huh. Probably a glitch save. Eh, let's reset. Alright. Alright, now let's give it a shot. There we go.
Oh, looks like this level's a recreation of World 1-1 from the original Super Mario Brothers. Alright, I dig it. <laughs> Every time I see those Goombas, like, just wandering around in between those pipes, I, uh, I think of that Mad TV skit. Where it's like, once Mario stomps on one of the Goombas, the other one goes like, Ah, no! That was my kid brother! You crook! You criminal! <laughs> oh, shoot. Anyway. I'm definitely gonna have to- I'm definitely gonna have to give this game a go one of these days, because this looks rather interesting so far. Oh, damn it. Oh, wow! So, the very end of the level, like, it immediately transitions into World 1-2. That's really cool. Huh, I wonder what- I wonder what that one does. Huh. Huh. Damn it! Well, I'm definitely gonna have to try this game out later, because this looks- this looks like a pretty cool ROM hack. But anyway, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and show off some more stuff. <laughs> what the Huh, I never saw that please wait screen before. That's interesting. All right, now let's get on to the real good stuff. Now, as you guys know, I kind of have this strange guilty pleasure when it comes to bootleg NES games because a lot of them can be like very weird and kind of funny in some way. And that is why I am really glad that this bootleg Donkey Kong game works on here, because this is definitely one of the weirdest... This is definitely one of the weirdest bootlegs I have ever seen on here. And, well, I'm just gonna let the game speak for itself. Get a load of that title screen. What the heck is with Donkey Kong's face? I mean, this is so freaking wild! I mean... And look at those character icons, like, especially Diddy Kong's face. I remember seeing a meme a long time ago with that picture, and it's and it's apparently called DD Kong or something. I have a feeling, like, I think this game might be the origin of that meme. Oh. Dang it, I didn't mean to do that. Okay, for some reason this game is having some color issues. It it never happened to me before. All right, normal sounding music for once. But let's go ahead and get started. What is going on with this music? And look, the monkey looks nothing like Donkey Kong. But yeah, this is Super Donkey Kong on the on the NES, except the graphics are very weird and the music is just friggin' wild. But yeah, this is definitely one of the weirdest bootlegs I have ever seen in my life. And that's the reason why I like this one, because it's just so friggin' weird. Ah damn it. Oh well, let's go ahead and move on to the next game. And I was really upset when I saw that Panda Prince wouldn't work on here because that one's another Guilty Pleasure bootleg game because this one's also another bootleg Donkey Kong game except with pandas. With freaking pandas. <laughs> anyway, let's go ahead and check out Mario 7. And yep, this is the Mario 7 that you guys are thinking about, otherwise known as... Granddad! Flintstones! 
Granddad! Granddad! What the f? Granddad! Granddad! What the sh? Granddad! Okay, enough referencing, let's get on with the game. Yeah, the opening cutscene, it's literally, like, untouched. Like, you can literally still see the Flintstones characters. And. At, and as you can probably tell by, uh. by what you're seeing so far, this is literally a hack of the Flintstones NES game. Except, look at the Fred Flintstone sprite. Like, his head is literally replaced with Mario's head. And the little lives counter on the bottom on the bottom of the screen, it still lists him as Fred. <laughs> oh, they just did not care at all. Anyway, let's go on to the next game. Lion King 5. I also wanted to add this one on here because, well... <laughs> For those who don't know, this bootleg Lion King game is very well known, mainly due to its most ridiculous game over screens. And if you guys remember from uh, some of my uh, previous videos, there is actually a plug and play sold by my arcade that you could literally get at at a Family Dollar, CBS, Walmart that pretty much has a variant of this game that's called Howling Killer, and it still has the game over screen. Now, I know some of you guys are going to want to see it, so I'm going to show it. But to those who don't want to see it, I'm going to provide a time code for you guys to skip to. But for those who do want to see it, let me show you. Alright, here we go. is so messed up. I mean, that is literally messed up. And I can't believe a variant of this game with that game over screen was on a, was on a My Arcade plug and play system that you could literally get on a, at a regular store. But anyway, that, that's all I have to show off for this little cartridge. Final verdict? I actually really, really like this. I mean, it's honestly really nice to be able to get a flash card that's really affordable, you know? So yeah, if you guys are looking for a for a flash card for your NES but don't want to shell out like hundreds of bucks, then at least now you know you have an option. Anyway, this is Night Street 235 signing off. I'll see you guys next time and thanks for watching.